So, we shall talk about uh, Green's functions and uh, in particular we will start with uh, Green's functions at uh, 0 temperature. Um, so, T equal to 0 and then we will uh, learn how to extend it to uh, finite temperature, but before we uh, go on to discuss uh, Green's function uh, at T equal to 0, we will have to do a number of things and uh, the thing that we want to start with is a basic definition of Green's function. Now, if you remember that we have introduced Green's function in the context of propagators and the retarded propagator was uh, identified as a Green's function um, and also the advanced propagator was introduced in that context. So, I will give a brief introduction to what Green's functions are and how they are relevant uh, to uh, condensed matter physics or uh, many body phenomena in condensed matter physics. So, a general introduction is what we plan to start with and uh, this is uh, slightly uh, uh, mathematical um, in nature in the sense the definition is mathematical in nature, but you will find that uh, what we uh, get at the end of it is quite useful in the con uh, context of condensed matter physics. So, uh, let us have a linear operator L. which uh, when operates on a function f of x, it yields a g of x. So, this is a linear operator and f x is any arbitrary function, which is a function of one variable and it gives a g of x. And uh, the Green's function um, is defined as um, So, uh, so we write Green's function by g x x prime, where L the same linear operator operating on g x x prime gives me a Dirac delta function, which is delta x minus x prime. Now, let us say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So, one can write down the solution of uh, equation 1 in terms of the Green's function as. Uh, so, f of x is equal to uh, g of x x prime um, and g x prime d x prime. So, the solution of 1 is given by 3 which invokes the Green's function. Now, this is a general definition a mathematical definition of Green's function. We have to understand that how it is of relevance to the study that we are presently involved in. <coughs> and for that uh, let us uh, take uh, this uh, Schrodinger equation um, and so this is equal to h acting on a wave function psi at t, this is equal to del psi del t. That is the uh, definition of uh, that that is the Schrodinger equation that we are all familiar with and the solution of this is given by psi of t in terms of the Green's function as d x. So, this is uh, in principle a function of uh, <coughs> uh, both x and t and and so we will write it with x and t and this is a d x and as a g x x prime t psi x 0. So, this is the integral uh, solution of the differential equation that we have written above which is the Schrodinger equation and uh, uh, the psi the wave function at any given space time point can be generated from a psi x 0 uh, or rather this is x prime 0 by taking contrib contribution from all um, x prime points and uh, introducing the Green's function here. So, uh, where the g x 
x prime t is equal to uh, exponential minus i h t over h cross and x prime and uh, this is very easy to see that this comes from the completeness relation of the wave functions that is d x prime the outer product of this should be equal to 1. <coughs> so, this is the uh, this is how uh, the wave function at a given uh, space time point can be calculated starting from a psi of x 0. Uh, here we have written x prime as a dummy variable and all x primes are being summed over. Uh, we have introduced this concept earlier. So, I will skip here and go on to define a green operator uh, which is defined as g of t and it is with a minus i and a theta function and exponential minus i h t by h cross. So, uh, just to remind you that this theta function uh, takes a value 1 when t is greater than 0 and it takes a value 0 when t is less than 0. Uh, so, theta t is the is the usual uh, heavy side function, heavy side step function. So, let us go to uh, <coughs> the Fourier transform of this uh, green operator. So, the Fourier transform of the green operator is g of epsilon, which is a canonical variable um, to, which is energy which is canonical to the time and this is equal to a d t uh, g of t exponential i epsilon t by h cross. <coughs> now, this can be written as minus i d t and the definition of g there and this is equal to i t uh, minus h by h cross. So, this is the Fourier transformed green operator and uh, also we can uh, write down uh, theta function the integral representation of the theta function which is equal to 1 by 2 pi i and d omega exponential minus i omega t divided by omega minus i eta. So, this is the uh, it can be easily uh, shown by doing a contour integration that this is equal this uh, the right hand side is equal to uh, 1 when t is greater than 0 and uh, it is equal to 0 when t is less than 0. Now, eta is an infinitesimal parameter And uh, so, one can check easily by uh, direct integration and uh, now recognize that there is another form of the Dirac delta function where delta of omega is written as 1 over 2 pi and d t exponential i omega t. And so, g of epsilon can simply be written as minus d omega 1 by omega minus i eta delta function of omega plus epsilon minus h and this gives me uh, an integral of this gives me epsilon plus i eta minus h. This establishes a very important relation from the point of view of condensed matter physics that for a given system if we know what g of epsilon is or g of omega is if you wish uh, to write it that way, uh, then it gives you the energy spectrum as a pole of the Green's function. So, 
energy spectrum is the pole of the Green's function. Okay, so, uh, this is the basic introduction to uh, the Green's function. Now, we will uh, get ahead with this uh, form uh, or rather the discussion of Green's function, but before that uh, we wish to say that a Green's function will be written in a representation which is called as an interaction representation. So, there are three kinds of representations that are used in quantum mechanics. Uh, and uh, so, they are called as uh, Schrodinger representation, Heisenberg representation and interaction representation and uh, their salient features are uh, discussed. So, one is the Schrodinger representation. And the Schrodinger representation is uh, uh, where uh, the wave function is time dependent and the operators are all time independent. So, uh, to distinguish it from the Heisenberg representation, and uh, where uh, the wave functions are time independent. and operators are time dependent. So, let us take this discussion a little farther and uh, let us write down in the Schrodinger representation. So, we will uh, call it as S uh, for the Schrodinger representation. So, in S representation we have the Schrodinger equation is equal to uh, h psi t, uh, h is independent of time and psi carries the time dependence and psi of t is uh, given by a trivial phase factor which is minus i e t by h cross psi of 0. So, um, now, uh, so this is in S representation and in H representation, we have um, in the H representation, we have operator any operator uh, which could be the Hamiltonian in this case is given by uh, exponential i h t by h cross uh, 0 exponential minus i h t by h cross where h is a Hamiltonian and um, uh, the equation of motion for the operator is given by uh, d d t or uh, t del t which is equal to o t and h. So, this is uh, let us write it a little neatly and this is equal to. Uh, so, this is the equation of motion and these are in the Heisenberg picture. Now, whichever picture you take uh, the expectation values of operators they should be independent of the representation. So, uh, keeping that in mind let us take an operator O and calculate its expectation values. Uh, 
between two operator between two uh, states. Uh, so, that is given by psi 1 and psi 2 in the Schrodinger representation. So, this can be written as, so this is in S, this can be written as psi 1 uh, 0 uh, exponential i h t over h cross uh, o, o at o is independent, o is an operator which is independent of time uh, and this is uh, exponential minus i h t by h cross uh, psi 2 0 and this is uh, in the Schrodinger representation and similarly in the um, uh, Heisenberg representation my wave functions are independent of time and the time dependence is carried by the operators and then this can still be written as just the same by using um, the relation uh, for the operator, uh, the time dependence of the operator in terms of the Hamiltonian. So, this can be written as exponential i h t over h cross um, o 0 exponential i h t over h cross psi 2 of 0. So, this is in the Heisenberg representation and you can see that both the representations of course, give rise to the same expectation values which is what it should be because uh, expectation values are physical observables or physical uh, quantities which should not uh, depend on the representation in quantum mechanics that you are uh, considering. So, then uh, the interaction representation is uh, where the both so operators are time dependent and wave functions are time dependent as well. So, the operators have a time dependence which is given by uh, O t which is O is an operator and this is i h naught t over h cross and O i minus i h naught t by h cross where uh, it is assumed that the total Hamiltonian it is written as a non-interacting part which is h 0 and there is an interaction part which is h prime. Uh, so, the operator the time evolution of the operator only involves the non interacting part of the Hamiltonian and uh, further it is assumed that h 0 does not commute with h. <coughs> so, the wave function has a time evolution which is given by exponential i h naught t by h cross exponential minus i h t by h cross psi of 0. Now, remember that you cannot write it as exponential i h naught minus h um, t over h cross because that this is possible only when h naught and h commute. Since they do not commute, you cannot write it uh, as combining the exponentials and uh, you have to keep both of these things separately. So, basically what uh, I mean is that exponential a, exponential b where both a and b are operator, if you exponentiate them is only equal to exponential a plus b uh, and uh, when a and b operators commute. If they do not commute then you cannot write it and that is why you cannot combine the exponentials. 
Uh, let us just check the expectation values of the operators in this uh, representation. So, expectation values. And um, this is uh, <coughs> uh, psi 1 t uh, o t psi 2 t is the expectation value of the operator O uh, in the between the state psi 1 t and psi 2 t and this can be written as uh, psi 1 uh, 0 exponential i h t by h cross exponential minus i h naught t by h cross and uh, for the for the operator it has to be written as exponential i h naught t by h cross o 0 uh, exponential minus i h naught t by h cross and uh, then uh, the other term has to be written that is psi 2 which is equal to uh, psi exponential um, i h naught t by h cross exponential minus i h t by this and there is a psi to 0. So, if you look at this then uh, these cancel and as well this and this cancel giving me um, exactly uh, the thing that I we want that is psi 1 uh, 0 exponential i h t by h cross o 0 and exponential minus i h t by h cross and psi 2 0. So, it is clear that the expectation values are independent of uh, any representation that you take uh, and it has been shown to be the same in Schrodinger's Heisenberg and interaction representation. So, we will uh, just tell you in a while that uh, why these, um, intra these representations are being introduced and the utilities of that. Now, let us show that how uh, the time dependence of the wave function is governed by the interaction term h prime. So, once again just to remind you that my uh, h is written as h 0 plus h prime where h naught is the non interacting uh, Hamiltonian part of the Hamiltonian and h prime is the interaction part. So, let us see that how uh, uh, the wave function uh, the time dependence of the wave function is related to the h prime. So, this is equal to i e exponential i e h naught t by h cross um, h naught minus h uh, exponential minus i h t by h cross psi of 0. Um, uh, this we have taken the definition of psi written just a while back just to remind you that I will put the definition once again here. So, psi t is equal to exponential i h naught t by h cross exponential minus i h t by h cross and psi of 0. So, uh, once you have to keep the first term constant and uh, take a derivative of the second term and then again you have to keep the second term constant and take the derivative of the first term and uh, this is what comes after that. <coughs> and so, h naught minus h is equal to uh, minus h prime. So, this is equal to minus i e exponential i h naught t by h cross and h prime exponential minus i h uh, t by h cross psi of 0. And I can simply introduce exponential i h naught t uh, here uh, with exponential minus i h naught t. So, that is minus i exponential i h naught t by h cross h prime exponential minus i h naught t by h cross and now in a bracket I would like to introduce this 
which is nothing but introducing a 1 there and psi of 0. So, this uh, will be um, this can be written as uh, so this is so del del t of psi t is nothing but equal to uh, uh, this is uh, nothing but equal to minus i h prime t and psi of t. We have just uh, used the definition of psi of t here and writing it as uh, so this um, exponential i. So, there is uh, this term which is uh, which gives me uh, h prime uh, and uh, so, so these things will combine to give me these time derivative or time evolution of the wave function. Uh, so, this is the equation of motion for the wave function which involves h prime. You can fill in a, a line here or a step here and uh, let us introduce an operator which is uh, u of t which is equal to exponential i h naught t by h cross exponential minus i h t by h cross with u 0 u at t equal to 0 is 1. So, the equation of motion for u I am writing it shorthand. So, equation of motion is u m for u is uh, del del t of u t. Again, I am going to take a, a derivative with respect to time meaning that first one will be kept constant and second one will be taken a derivative and so on. So, then it becomes equal to exponential uh, i h naught t by h cross and h naught minus h exponential minus i h t by h cross. So, that is the uh, that is the equation of motion for u and if you look at it the equation of motion for u and equation of motion for psi they look identical. So, this can also be written as del del t of u t which is equal to a minus i uh, <coughs> uh, h prime of t and u of t. So, this is the equation of motion for uh, u. So, u o m for psi of t and uh, u of t are identical. Now, since that is correct, then we can solve either of psi of t or u of t and can write down the solution for uh, say u of <coughs> t here equal to u 0 uh, minus i minus it is 0 to t and a d t 1 h prime t 1 and a u of t 1. So, this is the solution of uh, this equation that appears at the top of the page which is for the equation of motion for u. So, u has a solution has a time evolution which is given by this, but the only problem with this form is that both the left hand side and right hand side. Uh, they involve the same uh, variable unknown variable which is u of t. So, if you repeat this procedure for the right hand side as well, we will get an iterative solution by uh, doing it. So, u of t 1 we can write down again an integral uh, expression of, of the kind that we have written for u of t and then again we will get a u t 2 for which we can write down again a uh, repetitive solution uh, integral solution and we will get a series which is like this. So, u of t is equal to now since u of 0 is taken to be equal to 1. So, we can write simply equal to 1 and 0 to t uh, d t 1 
h prime p 1 uh, plus minus i square 0 to t d t 1 0 to t 1 a d t 2 and h prime t 1 and h prime t 2. So, this is the second term and there will be further terms which finally, can be combined with n equal to 0 to infinity and you have a minus 1 whole to the power n and a 0 to t d t 1 and 0 to t 1 d t 2 and so on and 0 to t n minus 1 d t n and we have so many of these interaction terms. Let us just write them little neatly t 1 uh, h prime t 1 h prime t 2 h prime t 3 and so on all the way up to h prime t n. So, this is the solution a series solution of uh, the uh, for the operator that we have introduced u of t and hence it should also be the solution for psi of t as we have seen that the psi of t and u of t have the same uh, equation of motion. Uh, now, it is important to uh, introduce a time ordering here and uh, that is going to be quite helpful. So, introduce time ordering operator let us call it as t and uh, what it does is that it does so h prime t 1 uh, h prime t 2 and h prime t 3 and it just with the earliest time it puts it to the left. So, h prime t 3 h prime t 1 and h prime t 2 if t 3 is greater than t 1 is greater than t 2. So, that is what it does this is an important step which I think you should take a note of this that we have a time we have introduced a time ordering operator which acts on a series of interacting Hamiltonians written at different times t 1, t 2, t 3 and it puts as you apply the time ordering operator it puts the Hamiltonian uh, or the interaction part of the Hamiltonian uh, with the uh, earliest time that is the time which is greatest uh, on the left and then orders it accordingly <coughs> and then next one goes after that and the next one after and so on. So, this is the time ordering operator. So, uh, this is also a step function that we are using uh, which is not exactly the heavy side step function, but it is uh, something very similar to that step function is interesting or rather is important here uh, interesting in this context. And this is theta of x equal to 1 for x greater than 0, it is equal to 0 for x less than 0, it is equal to half for x equal to 0. Okay. So, <coughs> so, how the t is written? Uh, so, it is take two times h prime. So, the time ordering operator operates on Hamiltonian at two distinct times and so, there is a possibility that uh, t is uh, greater than um, t 1 is greater than t 2 which is the case for the first one and if not then the other possibility is given by uh, uh, t 2 minus t 1 uh, h prime t 2 h prime t 1. So, that uh, you have uh, taken into account both the possibilities where t 1 is greater than t 2 and t 2 is greater than t 1. 
uh, if in, in a particular case if T 1 is greater than T 2 then only the first term survives and the second term will be dropped to 0. <coughs> and uh, remember one thing that if uh, h of uh, t 1 h prime of t 1 and h prime of t 2 would have commuted had they commute uh, then these ordering is unimportant. But since they do not the ordering becomes important. <coughs> so, let us um, look at the time ordering operator a little more carefully. So, let us just write 1 uh, by 2 factorial which is nothing but 1 by 2 which is a d t 1. I am just looking at a particular case where uh, for 2 uh, time variables uh, t 1 and t 2. So, this is from 0 to uh, uh, t 1 and this is equal to time ordering of h prime t 1 and h prime t 2 which is equal to 1 by 2 factorial uh, 0 to t d t 1 uh, 0 to t 1 d t 2 uh, h prime t 1 h prime t 2 plus a 1 by 2 factorial 0 to t uh, d t 2 0 to t 2 d t 1 h prime t 2 and h prime t 1. Now, if you see the first and the second terms uh, they are identical under the uh, swapping of t 1 to t 2 and vice versa that is t 2 back to t 1. Then we can write down that 1 by 2 factorial 0 to t d t 1 uh, 0 to t d t 2 time ordering of h prime t 1 h prime t 2 uh, this is equal to 0 to t d t 1 and 0 to t 1 d t 2 h prime t 1 h prime t 2 and so on. So, you remember that uh, something like this had appeared in our solution for u of t and this we are able to write down as time ordering of two operators. So, when you have n operators you will have a 1 over n factorial and simply we can write down uh, that term. Uh, so, so we will just, so for three time ordering operators this just give one more example, example for, for three time times t 1, t 2 and t 3 and this is equal to 1 by 3 factorial and there is a 0 to t d t 1, 0 to uh, t 1 d t 2 and 0 to t 2 uh, d t 2. Uh, so, what what is going to happen is uh, we have, uh, so this there is a 0 to t and there is a 0 to t. So, this has to be 0 to t all all are 0 to t and we have, so this is equal to a d t 3 uh, and now I have a t h prime t 1 h prime t 2 and h prime t 3 and this is equal to a 0 to t d t 1 a 0 to t 1 d t 2 and 0 to t 2 d t 3 h prime t 1 h prime t 2 and h prime t 3. So, we really do not need to care about uh, which time uh, comes first or which time is the earlier time as compared to others. So, we can simply write it with a time ordering operator and now also note that all the time integrals go from 0 to t and uh, this time ordering takes care of everything. So, uh, using this time ordering operator the solution of the operator that we had introduced u of t 
can be written as 1 plus and there is a n equal to 1 to infinity and there is a minus 1 whole to the power n by n factorial and now you have a 0 to t uh, sorry again there is a 0 to t and a uh, d t 1 d t 1 and uh, 0 to t d t 2 and all that and then 0 to t there is a d t n uh, this and h uh, prime t 1 h prime t 2 and all the way up to h prime t n. <coughs> this is the complete solution of u of t and hence reminding you the hence it is also the complete solution of psi of t. Uh, this uh, because it is an infinite series uh, because this n the sum goes from 1 to infinity we can write this as an exponential with the time ordering operator outside. So, it is t exponential minus i 0 to t and uh, d t 1 and h prime and t 1. So, that is the solution of uh, u of t and, uh, uh, and also so same solution persists or rather we should write is applicable to psi of t. So, thus if we know the, uh, the u of uh, t then we can also know how psi of t evolves and for that we have to know the interaction term at different time intervals uh, h t 1 t 2 etcetera etcetera. So, if uh, for a given pro so, so the idea is this that a particle is actually introduced into an interacting path and it undergoes uh, scattering with other particles or it is uh, acted upon by an external uh, interaction potential that is also possible and uh, which uh, so it undergoes uh, h prime at t 1 t 2 t 3 etcetera and this whole solution can be written as the time ordering operator multiplied by the exponential of this which involves the interaction term uh, at a given t 1 and it is been integrated from 0 to t. So, this is the, uh, the solution of psi of t and we will see that how uh, to one gets the Green's function from here.